Interested in real case applications of currency management automation software solutions? Well, you're in the right place. Welcome to CurrencyCast. My name is Austin McKinley. I'm the senior financial writer at Cantox and your host. In this episode, we have the pleasure to welcome Morgan Chavez, Forex and Interest Rate Derivatives, sales at BNP Paribas, Corporate and Institutional Banking. Morgan, a very warm welcome to you and thank you for joining us today on CurrencyCast. Thanks for having me, Augustin. It's a great pleasure to be on this CurrencyCast and to discuss with you the main benefit of automating FX risk management. This episode is sponsored by BNP Paribas, the bank for a changing world. Well, perfect. Can you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about your work at BNP Paribas? Yes, for sure. So I'm working at BNP Paribas since a few years now, and I'm working closely with the BCF sales. So BCF is actually the commercial banking part of BNP Paribas. And we are accompanying corporates, so small, medium to large corporates, to hedge themselves against FX and interest rates uh, risks uh, through mainly derivatives. However, we are looking into more and more innovative and digital solutions, such as dynamic hedging. So it is in this context that we signed a partnership with Cantox since a few years now, even I think, three years ago, in order to be able to propose this uh, very innovative uh, tool to our clients. What what is interesting to see is that there's a lot of different clients with different profiles in terms of size, volume and sectors that are really interested in this uh, tool. We recently conducted a poll on LinkedIn with CFOs, treasurers, currency managers, and we asked them about the benefits of currency management automation software solutions. Ahead in terms of the results, with 63% of the votes, came the idea of having more time at their disposal to devote to value-adding tasks. Second position, the need to reduce the cost of hedging. And finally, in our third position, the advantage of removing operational costs and risks. Now, let's start this conversation with our main topic, which is Foreign exchange automation is widely seen as part of the digitalization of treasury operations. And, well, it raises a lot of questions in our work with Cantox and BNPP with clients about some strategic issues. But let's start with a more tangible element, pain points. Morgan, what would you say are the main pain points faced by medium to large size companies with international operations but that lack of properly automated foreign exchange workflow. So from my perspective and from what I have seen, there are really four main pain points that could be faced by medium to large companies and that arise from the lack of automation in their currency workflow. So first of all, it's the reporting. So sometimes it is really hard for corporates to gather all the information from the different subsidiaries and to have a proper reporting. So, uh, moreover, this reporting is sometimes done manually, so some mistakes can easily slip in. Then the second point that I would like to mention is a time period. By this, I mean that there could be a more or less important time lag between the moment when the information is gathered, analyzed, and when the decision is taken. So when the FX exposure is created and when the FX exposure is hedged, This can have a really important impact, especially in the current environment that we have today, which is characterized with a very high volatility. Then the third point that I would like to mention is the netting. So by the lack of visibility of what has been done by the different subsidiaries, but also by the lack of visibility of the different cash flows that are to come, sometimes treasurers can miss the opportunity to net some cash flows together. And this could actually bring a lot of value to the company. So they could uh, save some, uh, to pay. they could save the forward points, they could even save some trading costs, etc. 
And then the last point that I would like to mention is the lack of time. So sometimes companies don't figure out the risk that it could engender to have no or too large hedging policy because they don't have time to devote to it. So they are often underestimating the FX exposure and especially, especially on um, secondary currencies. Moving to the pre-trade phase of the FX workflow and especially to the process of exposure collection. Well, let's discuss that a little bit. If it's manually executed, it's going to be time consuming. It's going to uh, be resource intensive and an error prone type of activity. Yet it's vital, vitally important to have a proper collection of the exposure. That is to say, collected in a timely manner and in a complete way. Well, again, how does currency management automation solution like Cantox Dynamic Hedging is the process of exposure collection. So actually dynamic hedging is precisely handling all the pain points that I just explained before, and especially on the pre-trade phase, so the process of exposure collection. Dynamic hedging is directly linked to the ERP. So an ERP is actually a software that organizations are using to manage day-to-day -day activities such as accounting, procurement, risk management, etc. And as dynamic hedging is directly linked to it, it has access to the right information without any time delay and which also enables the tool to provide an accurate reporting instantly. So it helps large corporates with quite a number of different subsidiaries to easily centralize all the information and also once all the information are aggregated to provide a real-time computation of the exposure generated. So having this phase automate, uh, automatized also avoids any human error. Most of the attention has been put on the trade phase of the FX workflow, at least when we discuss foreign exchange automation. Prior to using Cantox solutions, many corporates would manually book trades or manually select their desired liquidity providers. Now, working with Cantox and BNPP, clients can uh, select their uh, foreign exchange trading platforms they desire, or they can, of course, uh, trade with uh, Cortex, BNPP's own foreign exchange trading platform. Here, Morgan, the question is, what are the main benefits of having a proper integration between the pre-trade phase of the FX workflow that you just discussed and the trade phase itself. So having the pre-trade phase and the trade phase integrated together enables treasurers to have a better visibility of what has been hedged and what still need to be hedged. It provides a clear reporting with accurate information at any time. Then it also enables them to clearly define their hedging strategy. So what we have seen from our clients that are already onboarded on context, they uh, took the opportunity actually uh, when they considered dynamic hedging to uh, review their hedging strategy and to put also in place a clear hedging policy across all their different subsidiaries validated by their management. What we often see is that some corporates have a very active hedging policy on their main per, uh, on their main currencies, but not at the arm of more exotic currencies, which are more difficult to monitor and thus also more time consuming. So some of our clients have chosen dynamic hedging to take actually care of those exotic currencies, whereas they are still hedging their main currencies as they did before, so through derivatives, for example. This enables also the company to have different strategies on different types of their business, but also to diversify how their FX exposure is managed. Um, and then also uh, having the pre-trade phase and the trade phase integrated together also avoids any operational human mistake. So, uh, but some clients actually are afraid that this tool replaces an individual. But from what we have seen is dynamic hedging is just changing the way treasurers are handling FX exposures in a more efficient and opportunistic way. Um, and also having the pre-trade and the trade phase integrated together 
uh, also enables the treasurer to save some time and to be more focused on event-driven or more strategic situation that can bring a real added value to the company. So I would say that uh, having this phase automatized does not take away the relationship that the client has with the dealing group, but it changes just but it changes it in a more positive way. Time to move away from a pain point oriented conversation to more strategic issues. The word that comes to mind here is scalability. Prior to using Cantox solutions, some clients would stick to just a handful of what they consider core currencies. Now they can easily scale into any desired currency pair with a currency risk under control. Morgan, tell us a little bit more about this benefit, scalability. So, um, as I explained before on the question related more on the pinpoints, uh, some clients have a very active hedging policy on their main currencies, but at the harm of more exotic currencies. So either they have no or too large hedging policy on exotic currencies, or either they are even trying to avoid to have some exposure on those currencies, which can have a direct impact on the profitability of the company. So if we take an example, we often see that some clients are directly negotiating with their supplier in their reporting currency. So in our case, most of our clients are negotiating in euro. Instead of negotiating directly sorry, in the local currency of the supplier. So this is due to a lack of time and also a lack of interest to monitor the FX exposure and also to uh, reduce the number of currencies the company is exposed to. But by having an automated currency management tool, uh, such as dynamic hedging, client, ca clients can negotiate directly in the local currency and thus retrieve the additional margin that the supplier is taking to actually handle this ex fixed exposure. And this should normally enable the company to have a more dynamic pricing and also to be more competitive and profitable compared to the peers. And what about cost related issues? At Cantos we're fans of uh, growth oriented automation, but of course cost reduction plays an important role. Morgan, can you give us some examples here? Yes, for sure. So costs are always an important topic for treasurers. I mean, they are always trying to reduce, improve their costs, and even sometimes they have a really a lot of pressure to do so from their management and from stakeholders. So currency management automation can indeed reduce a number of costs, even if sometimes it is really hard to quantify them. So regarding operational costs, I could split them into two categories. So the direct costs and the indirect costs. Then we have the indirect costs. Um, those are clearly more complicated to quantify and they can be completely different depending on the company and the degree of automation. So the main indirect cost uh, for me is the time saving, which is related to the process automation. So if we take the different tasks of the different uh, trade phase, uh, we see that we could save a lot of time. For example, on the pre-trade phase, treasurers have to compute a real time of the exposure generated. They also have to collect all the different information from their subsidiaries and they also have to monitor the market. Then on the trade phase, um, they have to execute the different FX transaction with the different banks. They have to input the hedges in a tracking file, and they also have to reassess the needs when the um, transaction has been done. Then on the post-trade phase, they have to book the hedges, they have to do some records uh, on, for accounting purposes, they have to generate a detailed report with all the um, uh, exposures uh, related to ex exchange, and they also have to reconcile some elements with the ERP. So all those tasks 
all those tasks sorry can be easily automatable uh, with dynamic hedging and can save a lot of time to the treasurer that could be allocated to more strategic and event event driven subjects with higher added, added value for the company well it's interesting that you mentioned the uh, those direct costs and you uh, well you cite the case of of favorable forward points, right? For example, a European-based company that with uh, buys in US dollars and hedges in US dollars. And that brings us back, uh, which I find really interesting to the problem of the proper integration between all the phases of the FX workflow. That's why at Cantos, we're fans of not discrete automation, so uh, automating one part of the process in isolation of the other, but what we call end-to-end -end automation, which is the proper integration of all of the phases because in the case you mentioned if you don't have a timely and complete uh, process to capture that exposure well you're going to uh, to gain a lot less uh, financial gains from those uh, forward favor points now from your position as a forex and interest rate derivatives sales at bnp paribas you're obviously in touch with what's happening in the world of credit markets currency markets, lots of things are happening, interest rates are shifting, interest rate differentials also are shifting, and you just mentioned the case of favorable forward points. But what about the situation of unfavorable forward points, and what is the role here played by conditional currency orders, FX orders? So, um... I just took the example of an USD importer before, so I will take just the opposite example from an USD exporter, so an USD seller against Euro. And as the client is selling USD, the forward points are against him. So this means that if he wants to sell USD in future, they, he will have to pay the carry. So which is actually the differentials between, um, it's the interest rate differentials between uh, the two currencies, so the USD and the Euro. So by leaving a conditional order, like a stop loss, at the forward rate, for example, client can try to avoid those forward points. Either the barrier is triggered, and then the order is executed at the same level as the forward, or either the barrier is never triggered, and then the client has been able to gain part or even all the forward points. And in this case, it was, we are really in an optimization strategy. So client can also add a take profit order besides the stop loss order to ensure a certain level of profit. And depending on the volatility in the markets, he can also change the range between the stop loss and the take profit order in order to seize market opportunities. And, is, and actually this is really be manageable in uh, through dynamic edging. Right, and this also the idea here that you mentioned of delaying hedge execution in the event of unfavorable forward points. Well, it brings also additional advantages like more time to update cash flow forecasts and perhaps uh, more netting opportunities. So uh, oh, an entire exactly. world right opens up here, right? And look, I find this topic so interesting, right? There's the end of the zero interest world, interest rate world is now, uh, of course, happening as interest rates are shifting almost everywhere and give a lot of attention at Cantox about what we call forward points optimization. And you just illustrated this both in the case of uh, so favorable forward points and unfavorable forward points with the use of, of conditional orders. Now, say that a client has a fully automated FX solution in place with Cantox and BNP Paribas would then allow you to need a more, say, a strategic type of conversation to take the conversation to the next level with your customers? So, yes, sure. It allows us to have other discussion with our clients. It enables us to uh, switch our discussion mainly based on PNL risk to more strategic discussion related on balance sheet risk. So, for example, we are discussing intra group loans. I think that you already done that you have already done a nice video on this topic too, but also uh, some acquisition subjects, uh, dividends, etc. 
So also what is in interesting to see is that the calls that we are doing with Cantox and the client also enable uh, treasurers to have to make a kind of status on their hedging policy and to clearly understand their needs. Uh, we are trying to raise some questions on topics that, that they didn't uh, they that they didn't even thought of or to tackle some other subjects uh, about they didn't um, that they didn't raise before. And where BNP could also uh, clearly accompany them, for example, on derivatives, structured products, on deposits, on financing, etc. So we are really have having a broad discussion, but which can have a really uh, high added value to the company. Right. Okay. Look, Morgan, this was a really great conversation. I think we raised a lot of topics. Right. We started from. Uh, a conversation on, on automation in general. We covered the pre-trade, the trade phase, and some related aspects about uh, hedging policies, cost reduction in terms of forward points. I think it was, like we say in French, a tour de force, right? We did cover lots of points. Is there something you, you would like to, to add? No, thank you very much for your time and for having me uh, to discuss uh, all those topics which were really interesting and I'm sure that will interest a lot of other treasurers. All right. Look, um, we look forward to having you again sometime in Currency Cast and once again. So, Morgan Chavez, thank you very much for your participation today in Currency Cast. Thank you. Thanks to BNP Paribas for sponsoring this episode.